This must be on the bucket list of most anglers out there. It's time to go catch some fish. A visit to Fraser Island off the east coast of Australia, just north of Brisbane. Look at James, we and Sheila's. <laughs> we in the middle of nowhere. We've never been here. Myself and Dean came to visit. And uh, we're with Dorian, Kingfisher Australia, him and Don. And Dorian, we've arrived, we? At uh, Tincan Bay, Minsky Point, so we get ferry across to uh, Fraser. Okay, so it's a very exciting morning. We're going to Fraser Island. And what is this? What are you guys doing? So here we have to get permits to go on the beach. So uh, on the way, just pop into the office, we have a permit, get to uh, ferry right across, and then gives you permission to drive all along Fraser. There we go. You, uh, not 200 bucks, but it uh, it helps their parts for people on there checking the fish. They actually take some of the shad or tailor, or tailor here, shad you guys, and they analyze them to check the growth rate, etc., sustainability. And, and, yeah. so it's very interesting watching how everything works here. It's actually brilliant. We just came from the trade show, and uh, Dorian's been running us through a lot of things, very interesting things. We'll, we'll share some of it, and he'll share the rest with you guys as we ask him questions. So it's very exciting and I know your tank's full, you want to get there quickly, so we'll carry on with this conversation as we go along. Thanks mate. Hey, I'm a winner! We're going fishing boys! How to do safe, safe beach driving, in an emergency, who to get hold of, camping permits, it's all there. It's like a, where you can drive, where you can't drive, Perfect. how you should fish, where you should stop, no smoking and no dogs. Thanks. So we have to stay. <laughs> they run the ferries 24 7. Three, three of them, eh? The trapping there is quite an eye opener. Australia as a whole, for that matter. Everything just works. Kilometers and kilometers of campsites. Hello, just mate. <laughs> That's a very strong outdoor life in general. The quaint small little towns just add to the character and excitement of this prestige fishing trip. Think about it, we've got 150 k's of island with a, probably about 80 k's wide. Water going in and out of there. The pace of the water through here is that out. So that's Fraser Island, not just Fraser Island. Fraser Island, mate. And uh, it seems like hundreds of vehicles every day goes on and off here. Especially now in the tailor season, shad season, where the guys uh, come here specifically for the shad and a, a couple of other edible species. So, very well set up, everything is organized. Um, it's really just a pleasure coming here. Fraser Island is the largest sand island in the world, a 120 kilometer island stretching up north towards the Great Barrier Reef. It offers a couple of rocky points, some incredible fishing and really nice sandy beaches. Fraser Island is also popular for the freshwater lakes inshore. We are here specifically to explore this island from a fishing point of view. Okay, so this is this is the tradition, how it starts, how it happens here. These guys know how to make it work. They've got a whole beer keg built in with ice and a whole contraption with freezer, whatever, slash ice system to keep everything ice cold. That's priority number one. Slight difference from South Africa, we focus on the bait first. These boys here... Cheers, welcome cheers. to Australia, Welcome man. to us, bro. Right? So that's way, how it works. You don't get this from milk, brother. <laughs> <laughs> cheers. Cheers. And this is probably some of the best craft beer I've ever had. It's really, really good. So you did your sourcing well. Jason picked it up. Yeah, we had oh, a bit of fruit, tasted a couple of different things. Changed this a bit, put that. So it's Indeed. called specialty ale. There we go. That's it. Well, at least we are the biggest consumers of it at the uh, beer club. So. I kind of fit in. Yeah, body shape wise. So. <laughs> Round is a shape. I'm in mean, shape. The sticks <laughs> versus the stumps. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, enjoyment. Damn straight. Oh. Nothing better than this fruit juice this early in the morning. <laughs> this is actually quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> the other boys arrived, finally. They're a bit on the side side, so... But we'll put up with it. One of the most common natural baits they use on Fraser Island 
is referred to as pipis, which is a sand mussel or a clam. This mainly gets used to catch what they refer to as dart, our three spot pompano, but also frequently deliver catches on jewfish or mulloway as we know as cob. Fraser hosts a whole bunch of creeks and really spectacular inland scenery with freshwater lakes. We had a quick stop at one of these creeks to have a look and we were quite eager to get to our destination. Our accommodation was at Orchard Beach, about a hundred kilometer drive on the island going north. A little town on its own and Fraser hosts several areas with accommodation. This is very remote but still you have full Wi-Fi signal, cell phone signal as well as electricity and normal sanitary facilities. Well, look here, fantastic spot, just north of where we're staying. We came in late afternoon, it's quite a long trip up the island. And uh, we're just gonna see what we can get here. Maybe just keep the, take out the 11 foot 6 uh, salters tonight and look for some cob or other edible species. And then from tomorrow, we'll carry on and see, see what we can do in a full day's fishing. But all the guys are here, all Kingfisher team here in uh, Australia and uh, myself and Dean will play around with a light attack. Okay viewers, so uh, yeah, we are at Gala Rocks with Dorian and Don, guys from Kingfish Australia. And uh, yeah, the spot looks pretty good. It looks like there's some structure in the water. So seems like we, uh, well, there's a possibility of getting a Jewfish and maybe a Kingy. Uh, yeah, so that's the plan. Uh, we're gonna watch them. Obviously, they know what they're doing here in this area, and we'll we'll follow what they do for now, and then try some other stuff a bit later on. This is where I got my um, little jewfish last year. Came here. We had a bra, some societies, and then on a mallet fillet with uh, a two turn, two uh, four hooks in the top. Picked up and uh, it was good fun. After a quick throw at Gala Rocks that afternoon, we packed up early after the long day's trip. The next morning early, we were at Waddy Point, a fantastic deep water point, crystal clear water and similar conditions as to South Africa, with a southerly bringing more edible and predatory species like the Trevally and the northern winds cooling the water down and allowing more sharks to come in. Most of the time this water is crystal clear, which is a challenge in its own. But not knowing what to expect and how to really fish this area made it even more exciting. Nice, nice little GT on the Kingfisher Snook Spoon. Using the power angler with a PG. Yeah. I'm so happy to see you using a PG. PG, exactly. I have to put them in the bigger pool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, we are keeping the, the some of the smaller bait fishes. What they do here on Fraser to uh, fish for the kuta, the uh, Spanish mackerel. These guys are exactly the ones they use for those really big 30 plus kilos. The biggest one off, off here yeah, of the shore is a 58 kilo Spanish mackerel. That's bigger than anything that's been caught in South Africa as well. And the second, second biggest one taken off Australia. There was one bigger, but that was in a net, it wasn't caught. An interesting part about it, that uh, one of the gents shared with us last night, is it was caught by a South African. V2 strikes again. A little bit out of his lip. There we go. Not a bad, bad little guy. Coming over! First 
Castro eventually got going, got a little kingy on uh, a spoon, on a spoon, and uh, it's a good bait size. So we're gonna keep this one for bait for Spanish mackerel. Uh, outfit I'm using, I've got the 12 foot six saltest uh, spun, and I've got the Daiwa Vidal 4000 and 20 pound J bread. So it seems like the shoulder of kingies are thick here. So we're going to try and smash them over. Now from the start, there was quite a bit of trevally in the area. This one to three kilo type size. Big eyes, giants, and some others in between. These smaller trevallies are great live baits when targeting Spanish mackerel, which was definitely on top of our list. All right, so we were catching the dart for live bait. And while the guys were catching dart, I took a full metal jacket with a 12 volt tuna sucker and I threw a dart literally 30 meters. It wasn't even three minutes and I'm on. 